Hello amigos, Connor Sass, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a couple of Mexico games that happened in the previous few days. Um, the first one we're going into is the U23 final preparation game against Australia, which I thought was pretty cool seeing as that's where I live. And the second part of this video will be dealing with the Mexico men's national team friendly against Honduras. Um, so let's get into it. So obviously the first game we're going to talk about is the Olympics, um, the preparation games pretty much. Um, Mexico played Australia, which I thought was really cool. Uh, it was the first time I've actually managed to see Mexico play in Australia in any kind of tournament. So um, it was pretty cool. It was a really good game. Um, it was one of those rare U23 games that I had no issue watching. Um, there was a, a stream on, on, tw on YouTube actually. So it was a really good game. There was no commentary as well, which was quite cool. So yeah, there was no commentary on the game, on the stream that I was watching. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, it's just nice to be able to watch the game without being distracted by idiots talking about idiots, idiotic stuff. Um, so yeah, it was pretty good. Um, obviously, I think it was a bit end-to-end. -end. The first half especially was a bit end-to-end. -end. Um, Mexico started off, I felt, stronger. But they kind of allowed Australia to get into the game a lot more towards the end of the first half. Obviously... Giving away the penalty didn't help, and obviously Australia buried that in, and um, yeah, it was one nil. So at that point, I think, wow, it's just like proper test. Because I don't think Mexico, the U twenty threes, have played especially well since qualifying. I don't know whether it's because the pressure's off and they're just preparing for the tournament or what. I don't know. Um, like Macias is not involved at all in any of the plays at the moment. Uh, Vega as well has been very quiet. Um, Obviously, they don't really have anything to pay for. It's just preparation, so you can give them a bit of leeway, but still. Uh, but, you know, Angulo, man, always pops up. He keeps popping up. He's had a season like that now where he, he pops up with the goals quite regularly, but just not regularly enough, in my opinion. But he scored a really good goal, uh, made it 1-1. One, one. They're thinking, great, let's go, let's go. Um, and then, obviously, in the second half, Kevin Alvarez scored uh, to make it 2-1. At that point, I think Mexico really did control the game from the second half onwards. Um, Australia did threaten them a couple of times. Uh, they got the second goal back, actually, uh, via, only via um, a Malagon uh, like calamity. Like I don't know how he let that ball go in the back of the net, but he did. Um, for me, that highlights just the, the goalkeeping position dilemma um, by itself. I mean, Ochoa is great, um, but he's not good at penalties and he's not good at set pieces either. Um, and we don't really have anyone really that can step up into his position if, you know, God forbid he get injured or something. Um, but lots of people call him for Acevedo and that's cool, you know, great, but um, I don't think he has enough experience yet. Um, no, for me, I'll be playing him in these friendlies um, to get him the experience he needs so as to kind of get into the first team as soon as possible. But Tata obviously has other um, other ideas, and I'll get into him a bit later on. But um, yeah, obviously it's two all. You're thinking, okay, cool, I guess. Um, I felt like, I honestly felt like Mexico deserved a win. Um, and then they did. Obviously, Eduardo Aguilé comes along and scores a winner. And, you know, it was a really good goal. And was, I'm really happy for him as well. Um, he's one of those strikers that you kind of want to start seeing in and around the national team, um, in the senior team. Because um, I think he's a quality striker. I think he's just uh, super young at the moment. He needs to get more experience, a bit like Acevedo. Um, yeah, I, I really rate him and hopefully he can carry on uh, do really well. Hopefully he gets into the Olympic squad and um, yeah, he gets to perform. Because I think he might pressure Macias into making Macias actually do some good stuff in the games. Because he hasn't really for Mexico. Um, for the whole Olympic time really. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, that's pretty, pretty much the U23 game. Um, it was a good win, good 3 2 win. It was a really good game, it was very end to end. It's just, I think Mexico controlled it a little bit more, especially in the second half. Um, and I think their quality told towards the end of the game as well. Um, you got to the like 70th, 80th minute mark, and you could just tell Australia was pretty much done. Um, but you know, lots to learn from both teams. I think I think both teams would have had um, a lot to talk about at the end of that game. Uh, hopefully, Mexico in particular has learned 
a few things uh, from this game. Um, and we move forward. Hopefully, we can turn it back on a bit. Um, he hasn't um, really been on it since qualifying, like I said. So hopefully, he can turn up a bit, but you know, start scoring a bit more goals again, controlling the games like he was doing in the qualifying round. So yeah, it was a really good game. Like I said, it was really enjoyable to watch. Actually, um, yeah. Hopefully, let's go continue and learn a lot as much as they can before going into the tournament. Right, so let's get into the senior team now. So obviously the senior team took on Honduras in the friendly in Atlanta, I think it was. Um, it ended up in a bit of a nil-nil board draw, to be honest. Um, a bit disappointing. So it's been a bit of a disappointing run of form now for Mexico. Um, not quite sure why. I mean, I think I mean, the easy excuse would be that because Raul Jimenez is not playing in the team at the moment because he's injured, but... I think the problems go deeper than that. Um, I think tactically it's been a bit off. Um, whether they've changed it, I mean, they've had to change a little bit of the tactics to compensate for not having Raul Jimenez in there, but things like playing Lozano as a force nine isn't it for me. Uh, he's a winger. Play him on the left when he can cut inside, that's his best position, in my opinion. Um, you know, and um, I think Tecotito's brilliance in the last game kind of. Um, Helped us out a little bit, even though we lost against the US. But um, Tecatito for me is absolutely brilliant. Lozano is brilliant. Um, they should just be doing. I mean, they they're both carrying the team at the moment. They're both getting the getting, getting all the goals. Um, but Tecatito was quiet in this game. Um, Honduras was very controlled and very disciplined at the back. Mexico really struggled breaking teams down, in my opinion. Um, attacking wise and we're always vulnerable to a set piece and I think that's the only reason why Kota Kota scored uh scored but he started this game because I think he deals with corners and penalties a little bit better than the child does. Um and maybe Tata's testing him out to see whether Kota can be the guy that can step in when the Choa isn't up for it. Um I'm not really convinced by Kota. I think he's a great goalkeeper, don't get me wrong but I just think he's at the national team level he's not quite there. And we have younger players like Acevedo that I think are not quite there yet either, but could be the going there. And they just need to gain time. For me, I'll be playing Acevedo in most of these friendlies, just to give him the experience. Because the more experience he has, the more games he has, the more he's going to improve in the fastest time. Um, so I think Acevedo is the future. I think everyone can see that, except for Tata Martino. I don't know quite... I would love to know... Martino's thoughts on the whole goalkeeping position, to be honest, because that's the main weakness in uh, the defence as well. Um, Artiego's quality, like absolute quality, and he's going to be in the first team for decades, in my opinion, but he's, he's still got lots to learn at the national team level. Um, he's not the end finished product yet for me, but he, he's going to be absolutely amazing. I'd love, I love to see him start all these games and hopefully he, he's learning a lot and he's improving so um yeah so for me it's a little bit off um at the moment we've not had a convincing win for a little while um obviously losing the nations league final didn't help that would have i think papered over the cracks but martino i think quite rightly now is is open now to criticism I think he's been there long enough now to kind of know who his best players are, know which players he wants to play, which players he doesn't want to play. He seems to be rotating quite a lot, which is funny because Sorio got absolutely ruined for doing that. But yeah, everyone, there's I don't see anyone mentioning the fact that he's rotating. It's sure, he's doing the attacker wise. He's doing it because he has to. Raúl Jiménez is a massive, massive hole. Um, but Polito's not up for it going into the striker position. Polito's not up for it. Um, Henry Martin's not up for it. Um, like, it makes you wonder why Chicharito's not being called up. I know it's a, a tired story now. Everyone's talking about it, but it's true. Like, this time last year, fair enough, he was having a torrid time at Galaxy in his first season. But he's ruining the MLS at the moment. But he's only, I think he's the top scorer in the league at the moment. Like, that warrants at least a call-up, in my opinion. I know a lot of people that are super biased against the MLS just don't want him to play because he's a player for the MLS. 
He's the record goal scorer and he's on form at the moment. I know for a fact that he would have got a goal, at least a goal, in the, uh, the US game. And he probably would have scored against Honduras as well. Uh, he's, a diff he's, he's a different type of attacker to Raul Jimenez. Um, he's a finisher. He's not really a link up player. Jimenez will drop a bit deeper and he'll get involved a bit more. He's really good at that. Yeah, but we I'm sure we'll have more discussions on the teams in the near future. So take it easy, guys. I'll be back next time. Adios.